Hey, let's see what John DeMello has to say while I think about actually riding this. Uh, I was kind of crazed in the mid-60s when I was going to college, and, and in 1967 I landed in, in San Francisco, the Bay Area, um, in the summer of love, and that was fairly a cultural shock. I went to an, a very exclusive private art school and learned oil painting, plus photography, plus a dozen other things, but focused on paint, painting, oil painting. And then down the street was UC Berkeley. And that was um, a, a two mile ride and I had a motorcycle and I was doing music at Berkeley, U UC Berkeley at the same time. And, and UC Berkeley in the in 1960s was like cooking. I mean, it was the Vietnam War. I, I, I arrived and there was a tank and tear gas in front of my school. I was going, what is this about? Who did something, you know? And it was the Vietnam War. Everybody was protesting that. But it was a very interesting dichotomy between the music and the painting. And I did that because there was this new word that was introduced to us in the beginning of the 60s called multimedia. Now multimedia in the 1960s was a Kodak carousel slide machine that you'd have to have a bullhorn to talk over because it was so noisy because of the fan. Nothing could be synchronized. So it was like I could see into the future for multimedia. I could see that we were going to use more senses than one at a time. We were going to mesh them. And hence now we have flash technology on the internet. We have JavaScripts. We have all that stuff that can mesh into multimedia. Your approach, I think most would agree, that is a combination of business and art. Well, where did that come from? My daddy. My father is one of, there are people that have the left and right brain pretty well synchronized, but for the most part, we have one or the other, and we can do art and or we can do business. How can you make a living after going to an art school that, or a music school that actually tells you, you know, you're not supposed to make money with this, okay? You're not supposed to do any of that. That's rude, in fact. Now, my father was an ad man. He, he never sat down and said, I'm gonna write five songs. He always said, what can I do with five songs that I write? Where, who would buy? five songs that I would write. Oh, she would. What kind of music does she like? That, let me make that. So he always backed into it. And, and, but he used his creativity with his, with his music too. So my father had this business approach to music, to an art form. He knew how to market it. And a lot of times he would market it before he recorded it. I write for the pure sake of writing, but then I also take the tools that were given me and say, okay, who's gonna listen to this song? Who would wanna buy this song? This is silly. Or let me fix this. This is a cool song. So I do both. It was conditioning, but I, I believe there's DNA in there too, okay? Now, his brother was a trumpet player. His father was a mandolin player. And so it's DNA and it goes all the way back. And his, his brother was a great trumpet player. My father was a trumpet player too as a kid, five years old. What it takes to survive in the music business, because it is a business. It's playing beautiful things and touching people with music, but how do you survive through times like this? where we are going through a period where we are losing the CD. The CD is dead, you know? And my favorite question to anyone under 40 and over 40 is when was the last time you bought a CD? And I go into these uh, phrases that go on for 10 minutes and they can't remember. So what does it take? It, find, it, it takes a new way of delivery. Music's not going away. Music is part of everyone's life. Whether you're, you know, uh, a true master at composition or writer or a player, whatever. It's, it, or of somebody that rides in an elevator once a day because music's touching you. And my theory on that is if music was illegal throughout the world, if they said, okay, got to clip it off, no more music, okay? In the world, can't listen to music. 
My theory is in five days, the world wouldn't be here. We'd be in global conflict because it affects us so much, music and, and the sound of it. So it's a new form of delivery. It's a new way of trying to get music in the consumer's ears. That's the survival technique that I use. Who's the next John DeMello? Ooh, everyone asks me who's the next Israel Kamakavilole. No one's ever asked me who's the next John DeMello. I don't know. He's going to be taller. Okay, I know that, okay? And I know he'll be much more bulky, okay? And he'll probably smoke cigars. <laughs>